All right, so now that we are at camp, I wanted to talk about solar. Um, one of the things that we get questions on for solar panels is what, what do you need? What makes a solar panel work? And in all reality, there's different types of solar panel setups. It really depends on what kind of setup you're trying to do. And we actually have two different setups. Um, this is the Forerunner. So we'll start with the Forerunner first. The Forerunner, it, it currently has a Flex 185 panel. And that's our um, SIG panel with Sunflare Solar. The Forerunner currently runs on a battery system that is a house battery. So it's pretty much a second battery. So this is the second battery right here. Uh, you can see it's a full Victron system. We have a 200 amp hour battery. Uh, you have our Orion TriSmart uh, 121230. There's a fuse box. You have your shunt and then an inverter. I believe that's a 1200 inverter. This is probably the battery system a lot of people think you have to build in order to run solar. And it's not a bad system. It really, again, depends on what you're trying to do. So the reason for the inverter is because we have e-bikes that we want to charge and they use AC power. So in order to charge AC, you need to convert DC power into AC power in order to charge your wall mounted accessories, which AKA are two prong accessories. So yes, this is a great system, but not everybody wants this type of setup or has the means or needs to do that. So the next setup, which is going to be on the camper, we've ran something different. This one has two 115 watt solar panels up top. They are run in series. Um, the nice part about the camper is that everything is run into a harness. Um, but again, I don't have a house battery system built out like the Forerunner. I actually have a EcoFlow battery box and this is an EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. Um, Oh wow, I'm getting 113. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting 113 and not under direct sunlight. So that's another perk of the SIG panels is you don't have to be in direct sunlight, which most other companies, yes you do. Okay, so we have two vehicles here with two different setups. And why did we do two different setups? The Forerunner, we could have run a portable battery system, but we decided to go with a house battery because of how much we're charging. We're running Starlink, we're running the e-bikes, we're charging all of that. Um, we have the refrigerator. So there's a lot of bigger accessories that are only run in the Forerunner, but all those accessories are very power hungry. So he has the 185 with a 200 amp hour battery and the inverter to help make that happen. With the camper, it's not that we don't run the bigger accessories, but with the camper, the reason why we went with a portable battery system is because of space. Space alone caused us to decide to go with portable. Also to the ability to be able to take the battery out and use it somewhere else in case the camper so with the camper, um, the portable battery not only saved space, but it allowed us to uh, be able to take the battery out if we needed to, because the camper isn't always gonna go everywhere. The camper is kind of a travel truck. So if it wasn't going somewhere and we need to take the other vehicles, we can move the battery, or if there was a blackout, we can move the battery into the house and use it there. But 
again, the reason why we went with the portable battery in the camper is because of space. Solely because a five foot short bed really does not allow a whole lot of room for you to have battery after battery after battery. So the reason why the portable EcoFlow Delta II Max was what we went with is because there's actually six inverters on the back. The six inverters allow me to run a lot of AC products, two prong household goods. So the Nespresso machine, the frother, charging the e-bikes, Starlink, all of that stuff, the rice cooker, all of those are home appliances. Yes, I could have gone and bought DC for them, or sorry, I can, could have bought the DC version of all those accessories, but again, you need that many ports to run it. So why we went with six uh, outlets on the back? Because you never know, I might have to cook rice and use the air fryer at the same time for dinner, as well as having something else charged or accessories such as this Pocket 3. Um, with that being said, EcoFlow is not the only portable battery you can use. There are a lot of very well-made batteries out there. They're actually getting bigger, especially with their power capacities. So now Goal Zero, they are pretty established. Goal Zero has the 2,000, 3,000. I mean, again, like I said, the battery systems are getting really big now. So honestly, would I upgrade? Yes, I could actually upgrade into a EcoFlow uh, Delta Pro. I would love to get into a Pro because again, bigger battery capacity, more capabilities, and more household charging capabilities if it came down to that. But those are all creature comforts that kind of make you pick which battery system you want. Now, there are people that still charge, let's, let's say a Goal Zero 400. Why does that work? Because they might not have the bigger capacity needs that we do. So they're not running the air fryer, the rice cooker, the Nespresso. They're probably charging phones, iPads, uh, Gidgets, Gadgets, DJI, project, DJI products, whatever you're trying to do. But maybe they aren't charging that much. So 400 is fine. When you have a refrigerator, uh, I would start recommending increasing the amount of power because refrigerators, depending on the weather and where you are in the conditions, if it's cold, the fridge isn't pulling as much power, but if it's hot outside like it is here, it's starting to crank that power because it's trying to maintain its temperature while the exterior temperature is high. So it's gonna work a little harder, hence it's gonna pull a little more power. So the bigger box is only so you have enough power that you can actually depend on it and not have anxiety. Anxiety is huge when it comes to batteries. You always get a little worried when you start hitting that 50% mark and you're starting to fall to 40, fall to 30. That's when you're starting to go, oh, I can't do it. So the one type of battery I would say is make sure it's lithium because lithium allows you to run it down low if you had to, if the conditions weren't ideal and that way it can still charge back up. Um, so lithium batteries, LiPo4, you hear all of that. Those are great batteries, whether or not it's like the Forerunner where it's the Victron or any of these portable batteries. So make sure it's a lithium LP4 style battery. But again, back to portables. EcoFlow, Jackery, Goal Zero, there's Blue Yeti, Anchor, there's a lot of companies out there. So the nice part about Sunflare Solar is the Flex and the Flex Plus panels are not proprietary. So if you notice, a lot of these brands are proprietary and they say you can't use anything but their product in order to run their products. Because we are only manufacturing the solar portion of it, you can use MC4 connectors, which is standard industry hardware um, connectors, to go into any battery box that you would have. So in this case, for the EcoFlow, we bought the harness that goes MC4 from the connectors up top down into the EcoFlow box itself, and that's an XD60. But we do recommend the XD60i, which is a faster charging cable. And again, it helps um, keep the battery box charged for all of our accessories. So same with Goal Zero. Goal Zero has a little um, barrel plug. You just need MC4s to that barrel plug or the uh, Baby Anderson connectors. And again, you go right into that. Jackery, I'm not 100% familiar with, so I'm not gonna talk on them, but they too have their own plug and all, again, MC4 connectors to their plug and there's your input. 
So, here are two trucks with two different options and power ran. And again, there's nothing that is right or wrong about either one of them. You have to start looking at what you're doing, what capacities you need, what would benefit you, and then pick from there. Um, but for solar and these type of setups, I'm going to say if you're going to start now, technology has jumped so well, at least get a 200 amp hour capacity or higher, um, only because we're starting to see ourselves use more power. The newer technology has bigger boxes. So if you have an old 400, if you have a 500, the smaller boxes, they're not bad. You can use them as backup. You can move them around, be more portable with them. But if you're gonna buy for like a camper or something, at least start with like a 200 amp hour and up. Um, so this is just kind of a quick breakdown of our setups and what you can do with solar. Hopefully I'll do some more clips and kind of show you a little more details down the line, but hopefully this is some information that will help you when you're starting to decide to get a camper there or <laughs> a rooftop tent setup. There's a lot of options out there, more than happy to help out. Leave some comments below if you have some and maybe I'll make another video to answer those questions. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. See you guys.